I can't read it. Maybe if I was 20 years old again, I wouldn't have problems. But let's log in here and change the console. Because this is a very important thing. If you're doing much server work, uh, this will definitely save your eyes. So let's go ahead and log in. Once you're in, we're just going to run one command to really set up the console. And then we're going to go to another server that is not a Debian-based ser server like this one. So like Ubuntu and all those types of servers. This will work on those. But for like a Red Hat Enterprise server and those types of things, this can be a little trickier. And for you guys that just want to do this on your desktops, like using Arch and those types of things, uh, the Red Hat instructions are probably what you want to follow. So check the timestamps for the next one. But with that said, let's go ahead and do a, a depackage reconfigure. And we're going to go console setup. And from here, we can actually set up the console. I'm in America, so UTF-8. Uh, for this, uh, if you're English, you're going to probably want to do Latin 1. Obviously, uh, if not, choose something else. Or you can say guess optimal character set. And I think this is based off your keyboard. Uh, so I, I've had pretty good luck with both using just Latin 1, obviously, for English. But I've also done guest optimal and never had a problem either. So for this, I like to do terminus. And then this is where it kind of gets interesting. I'm going to go ahead and amp this up to like a 16 by 32 to get really big font. A lot of people probably don't want to go this drastic. They probably want to like a 12 by 24. But for today's video, I just kind of want to show it. Now, it says frame buffer only. And that means if you don't have a powerful enough graphics card and some other things, it just may not work. And as you see, we got a lot better uh, as far as this goes. And we'll just do a uname SR. And you can kind of see it's much more readable, much clearer. So very easy on the Debian-based systems out there. However, on the Red Hat systems and Arch-based systems and other distros, this isn't uh, as easy. So let's go ahead and dive into that. So let's go on to the next distribution. Now, uh, this can be applied to Arch Linux, can be applied to a variety of different distributions that don't have a deep package reconfigure console setup. Uh, and this also kind of tells you how the console works as far as uh, fonts and those types of things. So you can do a lot of crazy stuff with this in pretty much every distribution. So it's really good to know this section. So I'm gonna go ahead and log in here. And uh, since this is a rel based system, there's not very many packages, obviously. So let's go ahead and install the EPEL package or the enterprise repository. Okay, I updated that. I'm just gonna go ahead and update my repositories real fast, and then we should be able to install these things. Rocky Linux and CentOS uh, typically has all everything locked down and ethernet disabled by default. So fun little deal. All right, with that done, now I should be able to do the font install once we have EPEL in there. And the package is actually terminus, dash fonts, and console. Now, this is where all the fonts are displayed. So if you're curious of what fonts you can choose for terminal, I just particularly like the terminus font. That's why I went out of my way to install it. I think it looks the best. But you can do LS, and then it's under USR for system resources lib kbd console fonts so quite a bit to choose from here and each one you can look at most times when you're on the screen here and you're looking at these different fonts like isos usually when it says this it's like a 22 point font or a 16 point font uh, so so you can actually kind of choose based on that and we can actually set this font directly in here just doing a set font and we're just going to go tur and I'm just going to go B32, and you can kind of see that 32 in right here. And then bam, there it is. Now that's a little bit too big. So probably want to kind of size that down a little bit. So let's go ahead and do a 16 in. That kind of gives it that clear image, obviously a lot better than your stock font. But this will obviously reset on boot. So I'm going to teach you some more things here. Uh, this is a bash prompt. So you could actually just do this to your bash RC. So let's say you do a vim bash RC. You could toss it in here and just say, hey, go ahead and set the font when bash launches. But I don't particularly like this way. So I'm going to teach you a different way as well. And now we set the actual V console up a little bit better to use our font. So we'll just do a vim etc v console. 
and this is where we actually change our font. You can see this is kind of the default font that's there, but we need to set our Terminus font. And you can kind of tinker around with that set font to figure out exactly the one you want. Uh, so let's go ahead and put ours in here. And we're just gonna put a Tur V, and we decided 16 is a little bit better than 32, and then in. And it looks like that's the right login. Let's just do a set font, make sure. Yeah, that's the font we had. So now that we have our new terminal fonts, hopefully you learned a little bit of something of where the fonts are stored, how to set them, or at the very least, just to run that dpackage reconfig command if you're sitting on a Debian-based distribution. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. I thought this would just be kind of a fun one for those that are honestly on their TTY or just straight up server users or console users and you're getting a little older and you don't like the small text on your console like me. Uh, so with that said, again, let me know your thoughts. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.